Hi, I'm Peter Christian, and today we're on location at the EMP Museum in Seattle, Washington. We're going to talk a little bit about the history of costuming in the motion picture industry. In a motion picture, a successful costume must be a color on the canvas or a stroke of the brush, careful not to draw too much attention, but instead be a natural part of the character that wears it, defining them and weaving itself naturally into the visual narrative of the film. Silent film era costume design, such as it was, were essentially outfits that the actors chose from racks of available clothing from scene to scene. Incidentally, this is how the look of Charlie Chaplin's The Little Tramp was born. Around the same time, D.W. Griffith was laying the foundation for the modern film costume department. For the 1914 film, Judith of Bethulia, Griffith was the first to have the leading actor's costumes designed by an outside source. From the 1920s through the mid-1940s, costuming began to develop around the build or look of the actor and what flattered them or created a signature look, while still remaining as true to period as budget would allow. With the introduction of Eastman Color Film in 1950, color was definitely king. From the late 40s through the mid-60s, film producers used as many colors as possible in costume design to capture the attention of audiences mainly due to the advent of television, which was a competitive black and white format. This is well demonstrated by the 1956 film The King and I, with its richly colored costumes and scenery. The 1970s was a crisis period for Hollywood that saw aging directors leaving more duties and decision to the up-and-coming generation. During this period, costume designers, as they did in early Hollywood, often turn to the actor's own wardrobe to create a more realistic look for a character and have the costume blend in with the cinematic canvas. Costumes can also be used to establish the look and the feel of a film. When Robert Fletcher was asked to come back as the costume designer for 1982's Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan, the film's director, Nicholas Meyer, asked Fletcher to redesign the costume into something that was more striking than the drab pajama type uniforms that Fletcher had designed for the previous film, Star Trek The Motion Picture. Meyer wanted the feel of the clothes worn by Douglas Fairbanks Jr. in the 1937 film, The Prisoner of Zenda. Meyer wanted the characters to have a traditional naval appearance that the audience could identify with, but hailed back to the films of yesteryear, while still maintaining a feeling of the future of humanity. The end result was a costume that divined Star Trek for fans for two generations. How can anyone forget such iconic characters like the Ghostbusters and their trademark flight suits, or Neo and his cyberpunk outfits, and of course, Harry Potter and his school of wizardry robes? A costume can transform an actor from just a character into a legendary icon, like Indiana Jones with his signature jacket and fedora. It's an integral tool for a filmmaker that has to tell the story every bit as much as the actor wearing it. It has to help the director bring his vision of the moment to the screen itself. Thank you for watching. My name is Amigo Montoya. You please my father. Prepare to die. My head was cut off. Okay. <laughs> if it's not one darn thing, it's another. All right, we ready? <laughs>